Okay, we will get started. Welcome back. Um, I'm taking over. Uh, your fellow instructor has previewed a little for me. Uh, I know your names. Um, I think I know about where you're from. Four of you are teammates, right? Three of you are. And and the others, well, Kristen, you and your mom organized this, right? Okay, so everyone knows Kristen. All right, so I am Mark, and I would like to get to verbal excellence, which you're developing, and this fairly strict regimen is what we want you to do every time on the SAT. I am going to ask you to do four questions on the grammar section, section two. You'll have five minutes. These are on the short side, so five minutes to complete, but also to defend, okay? And Maya told me that you have been assigned a letter to always deny if it's wrong and defend if it's right. So let's make sure. I've got Angela as our A defender. I've got Becky and Bhavni. Oh, now I see why. You are our B defenders or deniers. We didn't have a C uh, for first name. So Kristen, you got C along with Leora. And that leaves Shante and Tina. You guys have the Ds. And Angela, I'll back you up. I'll be the second A defender if need be. So here's the exercise. Please take these five minutes, do the problems, and with any extra time you have, defend your choice. And if you have still extra time beyond that, I'm actually going to give you a couple extra minutes beyond that to then make sure you can be the explainer. What's wrong with www will be going through sometimes all three of the wrong answers. All right, I'll catch you in five minutes. Go at it. It's questions 38 through 41, page 330. Okay. Let's regroup. All right, the answers are up. I know a couple of you, it looks like, have been grappling with them already. Good. I'm now going to give you another 90 seconds to just make sure of your right and wrong answers. Again, they're up except for one of them. And for these three of the four problems, please make sure you know how to defend at least your choice. And if you've done that already, go after all three. Be the WWW for all three of them. All right, I'll catch you in 90 seconds. All right, let's dig in on 38, which I thought was the hardest of them. I'll tell you why. Maybe one of you can tell me why you thought it was hard for me. Um, and I especially would like to hear why A is wrong if you actually picked A. That'd be great. Otherwise, Angela, our A person, is going to tell us why A is wrong. Anyone? All right, then, Angela, you are the A denier. Why? Okay, I agree. This is considered a run-on, and be wary that the comma and is rarely going to work because they can be more concise. And remember, to the SAT, saying something in a shorter manner, even if it's one word shorter, is almost certainly a better answer to them. All right, Becky and Bhavni, what's wrong with me? Mm. I'm not 100% sure. I believe whom is acceptable. It's not used in this place right, but it's not a bad word as a pronoun. It's considered an object pronoun, and I think that could work. There's a different error. So, all right, partner, Bhavni. Yes! It's the, the problem here is after the comma, the retaining is not what you want to have follow employees. They already said the verb retain in the same sentence. And though they're slightly different words, the SAT, like all English, prefers not using the same word twice in a sentence. So we get to see why is it so good? 
it replaces which for retain replaces retaining with which which is proper it's a clear reference it is more succinct it gets you home without the extras that be added as for d d defender tina shante i agree and this is a right way to eliminate the that is vague it might be referring to paying for tuition it might be referring to helps business retain employees by contrast c had a very clear which refers to what was right before the comma retaining employees so the preference for clarity over vagueness we know the sat wants clarity all right let's go to number 39 where i have a strategy and i especially want your, our a and our d people shante tina angela what do you think my strategy is because both are wrong correct they're wrong for the similar reason we've said this before that a period and a semicolon to the sat are indistinguishable they are two separate clauses independent clauses and it's a nuance at most and the sat does not break the tie with a nuance and therefore both of them are wrong so we're left with B versus C, B women, Becky, Bavni, why not B? I agree. The, a colon is good for explaining. It's also good for solving a mystery. I guess that's sort of an explaining. It's good for um, specifics that were led up to beforehand. But this is a continued reason um, that doesn't fit the colon. All you need is because C has that easy, hopefully, from now on. I didn't give you the answer to 40. Who thinks they know it? All right. Among those who think you know it, will you put in the chat your, your preferred answer? And I have everybody. Good. Somebody who did get this right knows why they got it right. Yeah. All right. Bring it on, Kristen. Perfect. Let me elaborate on one thing. Balance, evenness comes up a lot on SAT punctuation. This is one example where the evenness of comma before and comma after, not dash, not semicolon, not colon. Um, the no change was to have nothing. That would leave the first comma without a bracketing second comma. And we need that bracket because this is a subordinate clause. And remember from day one, we talked about how you take it out, a subordinate clause, but it's indicated by having same, same. Usually it's comma, comma. Elsewhere it could be dash, dash. It could even be parentheses, parentheses. But you need the balance, and this doesn't have it. Well done. All right, last one. I have only one, so I'm going to go to the D women. What is wrong with spacious? Right answer was A. No change. Deep was fine. Deep knowledge, spacious knowledge. For those of us who are on the fence, how do you get rid of spacious? Right, we don't hear that. G give me a literal reason. Literal. I'll open it to anyone. Ah, how about that? That space is a measure of width. So wide knowledge is different from deep knowledge. And I do think that deep is a little more impressive, but I have a clearer reason. Even if it is spacious and appreciated, okay, their knowledge isn't spacious. That's capacity to hold something. Literally, that is what spacious means. Capacity to hold it. Does this candidate at UTC, which by the way, I live one street away from their headquarters. Does this candidate have space or does she have knowledge that fills the space? Filling it would be different than spacious knowledge. Now, 
having deep knowledge, that gets the quality, probably a better quality as well. All right, nice boy done. We are going to let you do the next exercise, a longer one, because you're going to get a whole set. And on this one, I'm going to want to know which ones you got wrong and which answers you picked, because that'll hone us. You'll be able to put them in the chat, and that'll allow us to see which ones we should do. You can chat it just to me, okay? So you don't have to expose all the ones you got wrong or right. But please, after we're done, answers will again be up. Let me see through the chat the ones that you missed and which answer you chose instead. So example, if it was on question 11, right answer was A, just write down 11D, that's what you chose, good enough for me. All right, so we're going to the previous set of words. It's going to be questions 33 all the way back to 23 and timing on this. Let's go with, I'm going to give you one extra minute beyond what we normally have. So normally eight and three quarters, nine, let's go 10 minutes. I will see you back then.